Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Hindi Project podcast. Alhamdulillah, today we've been joined with Sheikh Mahmoud Hassan and we had a very in depth podcast, the longest we've ever had. We talked about Black Panther, we talked about Urtugul, the fav- the, this popular Turkish show, and compared the two of them <laughs> with an analysis. We talked about Muslim leadership, we talked about um, you know, the way that people see Islam, particularly in a political sphere. Uh, it was really interesting. We could have probably talked for another couple hours, but hope you guys enjoy it, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, today I'm joined with Sheikh Mahmoun Hassan. He is the executive producer of Let the Quran Speak, which is the famous uh, television show that's been running for many, many years. How long? Uh, since 2001. Since 2001 under uh, uh, Dr. Shabir Ali. Yeah. He is also previously the imam of the Clarington Masjid. Clarington for those. Formerly. Formerly. <laughs> <laughs> Clarington, for those who don't know, is on the very, very, very eastern edge of the greater Toronto area. And in fact, he drove all the way from there to be here today, which probably took him at least an hour plus. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, before that, he was the imam at uh, St. Catherine's Masjid. I wasn't really an imam. I was I was one of the, uh, um, I guess really I was on the board of directors, so I was oh, kind of okay. doing some of the work there, but I wasn't really an official imam. You were like so. doing the role of the imam. I was just actually leading so I'll give him khutbah when, pe- <laughs> when, when the other imam doesn't come in. Uh, basically being the yeah. imam there. <laughs> Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm really glad you were here. Actually, when we thought about this concept of like the podcast, um, and I started thinking in my head, okay, who am I going to have on? Like immediately I thought about you, even though we don't meet that often because you live way too far. Um, every time we do meet and sit and talk, like I always find like our, our conversations are pretty interesting mm-hmm. and the kind of conversations that I think a lot of people would want to be listening to. So, okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're here because together. Because you don't meet me that often. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we always have like a lot to download once we're yeah. like <laughs> sitting together. Um, so one thing. First of all, I think it's really amazing <clears throat> that you're uh, Sheikh um, Sheikh Ali Hindi's son. By the way, this is this, this to me in in itself is like an amazing thing because I know Sheikh Ali is from like such a long time ago since I was a little kid, and yeah. you know on TV like he's the guy who comes on TV. So I thought, yeah. and then um, uh, and then I was invited a long time ago. I think it was like two thousand and. Eight, two th- yeah, two thousand and eight, two thousand and no, no, two thousand and nine, something like that. I was invited to give a khutbah at Salah I used to think Salah is like a huge mosque, right? And I was driving yeah. from St. Catharines, and at the time, um, you know, this the 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 Toronto eighteen guys were, oh, know, right. were, were, were yeah, there was stuff was like yeah. happening, and your and your father was in in Hajj. So as I'm driving the whole time, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go. As I'm walking in there, Cesar's going to take my name. <laughs> and it's going to be like all this like crazy thing. Um. But uh, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, that stuff is wildly overblown. I think yeah. <laughs> the perception. Uh, it's interesting. Like, you know, obviously, me and my dad have like a lot of differences of opinion uh, on a lot of different things. But at the same time, he's not like he's portrayed sometimes in the media. He's not like he's portrayed even in the community yeah. the way that yeah. people see him. Like, when you get to know him, um, he's uh, he's a different person. He's like. If you're going through difficulty, he's the person you want on your side. Yeah. He's like, he's going to yeah. stand up for you and yeah. stuff and help you. Plus the fact that he's a comedian. <laughs> he's pretty funny. Yeah, yes. he's a comedian. For sure. uh, underrated humor. <laughs> <laughs> he's a comedian. But, you know, alhamdulillah, like, uh, you know, our was organizations. He, was he strict when you were growing up? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And it happened gradually, like for me. I remember on my birthday, I was like, what, nine maybe? We went to a conference. I think it was like a Iona conference. They used to have those back in the day. Oh, it used to be an organization that did stuff. The, which one? Iona. I don't even know that. I don't know. It was yeah. one, something like that. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we went to the conference. came back home. I th- I'm pretty sure it was my ninth or 10th birthday. I wake up early in the morning, run down the stairs. I want to watch my Saturday morning cartoons. TV's gone. Mm. Like, where the heck did the TV go? Yeah, conferences do that. Every time I come back from a conference, I do the same thing to my kids. I, I just get really wild and out. I, I uh, remember when I, when I just started kind of like practicing, um, and this was a while ago. I, I I went out on like like 
for the tabligh jamaat guys yeah. right? for like uh, like a weekend right but then you know you, you you spend your time in the mosque and you come back like full of like full you know what I mean? you're like full out right and as i come home i'm like my father is watching tv from back home and i was like turn this off you know it's off and this, all this and my dad was the president of the mosque like imagine this you know what yeah. I mean? he's like what what happened to you like yeah. i don't never want you going out with these extremists again ever you know what i mean yeah it's and, interesting there's always that overcorrection stage when you're yeah. like getting religious yeah. uh like one of the shiuch right now is a convert and he told me like when he first accepted islam and it was like you know amr bin ma'ruf and yeah. kind of joining good forbidding evil he's like my mom wanted to go to the church and i was like i can't let her i have to join good so i'm like I think we were both in that yeah, conversation. Yeah, He's like, yeah. I was sitting in front of her car. Like, you have to drive over me if you yeah. want to go to church. Yeah. <laughs> and you get this like overcorrection stage where you're trying to get religious and you just go a little bit too far yeah. uh, setting that up. So that was a very difficult birthday though. That had. <laughs> so, so I mean, so, for, and then he, he just took it away for He it. just took it away. I was like, where's the TV? And I go, and it's like, yep, no more TV anymore. And the rest of my life, we didn't really have TV. Um, I, yeah, I think it came back once. No, no, that was cable. So the TV was gone for a long time. Um, we had he had already cut cable for a long time, mm -hmm. but cable had come back the year that Egypt was in the World Cup. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It came back for that summer, two thousand and five. Uh, no, 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 two thousand and four, nineties like even. I think, oh yeah, like ninety two or something. Mm -hmm. It came back for then, and then it was cut after that. So, yeah. but yeah, well, I mean, they he, lost he, on the first game. I think, and it, was, uh, <laughs> it didn't really matter. It doesn't matter what year it was. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he was he was more strict back then, and, and you know he's softened on a lot of things over the years. <clears throat> so you you have sisters and brothers? I have three sisters and two bro and one brother. So this is an yeah. interesting question. I shall ask you then. Uh, was he more strict on the girls or the boys? Um, I think he was pretty equally strict on us. No way. Yeah, he, he would have been easier with the girls. No, he was strict on them too. The younger ones have gotten it easier because mm, then the he, just, ones. he realized that at some the, point yeah. what he could lose <laughs> <laughs> if things go south. Yeah, but I remember, like, for me, even like going to hockey games to play hockey, mm -hmm. I'd be really strict about when I could go, when I couldn't go. You have practices after Fedra and stuff. He's like, Sorry, I'm not taking you, it's too early, you know, and he didn't want me like uh, spending too much time, um, not under his like immediate care and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So um yeah are you the oldest though i'm the eldest son i'm the middle child oh okay yeah so yeah yeah so i'm the middle ch middle child as well and and um i don't even know if it, it plays anything but i think there's a lot there's a lot of correction that happens because the the parents mm -hmm. kind of realize like okay the first one we kind of like <laughs> we didn't really know what you we were doing and in yeah. the second we trying to correct them and then the third one you're like oh it doesn't matter you can never <laughs> fix them anyways they'll come out however they want yeah how so, many are you guys? Five, two, or uh, oh, well, there was only three of us, three of them, and I'm the middle child, okay. but I have four, so I have four kids right now, right? Okay. Um, and uh, the first, like Miriam, the the oldest, yeah. she's ten now, and uh, I'm really worried, like I'm really scared for her because mm -hmm. um, I've just realized that I do not know what I'm doing. I just, I've just realized <laughs> this, like I've just, it's so weird because I I didn't think I was going yeah. to. I thought like I knew what I was doing and then just like last year was an eye-opening year for me because uh, stuff happened to her in school like she mm. got bullied and oh. uh, it wasn't like even a big deal like just, just one of her friend's brothers just kind of she it, it's really funny actually she's the one who kind of picked on his sister and then he came mm. and he's like oh well you can't do this with my sister but then he went a little extreme yeah and I just wanted to go and kill the kid. I, I really, <laughs> literally, I, when I heard about it, my my daughter, like this is like your daughter, right? And yeah. she was like crying. She's like, heart, she's broken. She didn't want to go to school anymore. Yeah. Like, what's happening? She's like, oh. And then I had to like do investigation, like a whole a whole bunch of investigation in order for me to like understand the fact that oh, you might you're being bullied, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, well, you know what? We'll go to school together, and you mm -hmm. point out the boy to me, you know, and I'll deal <laughs> with him, right? And then. I have a friend of mine who's a teacher. He's like, no, 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 don't do that. That's just not how it works anymore. You know, yeah. like you're just, you know. But I was so angry about it. And then I remember that day. Subhanallah, I'm reflecting on it. But um, that was the day when I like I dropped her off, and I was just, and I just watched her walk in, and 
I just realized I have no idea what I'm doing in this like in 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 this whole idea of raising like what am I doing raising kids you know what I mean and I've subhanallah I've, I've delivered so many talks and so many khutbas on like you know raising children raising righteous kids yeah. and stuff but I don't know what I'm doing to them in terms of like um in terms of their like psychology you know what I mean like I just mm-hmm. I feel like I really is a, is a too big a responsibility for me you know what I mean? and I remember that same day I called my dad I was like I was like dad you know you like and and I, I, my dad is uh is real cool uh if you mm-hmm. you've met him you probably like really like him but he's a comedian and at the same time he's, he's really reflective and I was just like when you had us as kids, like I was like, did you know what you were doing? Like you had a plan. He's like, absolutely not. <laughs> and he's uh, the funny thing is like he's like, I don't think anybody knows. Yeah. Like everybody's just going on. Like everything is just reactive. You know what I mean? Like you're mm-hmm. always reacting to how you raise the kids, and that has just like honestly, it's just it's, it's made me crazy. You know what I mean? Like I, I, yeah. I guess I, I, I really want to be in control of things, right. and you can't control kids. Yeah. You just can't control, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just can't control. Like, I thought I'd be, like, really strict and then control things. But then that doesn't work, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I, I know imams' kids who've gone rogue. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, really good imams, right? Uh, I know daughters of, like, shiuch as well, you know what I mean? Who are just, like, the baddest, you know, kids out there, right? But, you know, I talked about this on another episode. I think that's, like, there's a reason for that. That's actually more mm-hmm. of a theme because these imams are, like, so overworked. They're leaving their families yeah. behind. Yeah. Like, there's one imam... Like literally his wife is always reaching out to her family friends, please take care of my kids, please take them yeah. with you when you go out, please because the dad's not there. He's not there. Yeah. Yeah. He's too busy. Yeah. So But see, subhanAllah, <clears throat> but this is but you're so you're an imam now and, and this is the thing mm-hmm. that I always like so when I was an imam, I was I was too busy to mm-hmm. kind of do things with my kids. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um and uh b- because because you always thought that the community was like your job. Yeah. And the community just doesn't end. Like yeah. the community's issues just don't end. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Regardless of what anyone says, you can kill yourself like that. Yeah, like, yeah, and you lose yeah. your family. Like, yeah. like you know how many shiuch have lost their wives? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and like over things that are just like they could it could have just been fixed by scheduling themselves better. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's scary. It's difficult because yeah. like yeah, you're right. You're like trying to assume the responsibility of the community, and the community is never ending. And the community is never going to stop asking you, yeah, and not never stop demanding of you, never stop judging you for whatever you lack. And the moment you and you stop answering your call, your phone, uh, you become an absentee, man. You, you're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> calls for for resignation <laughs> or, or or you're firing come out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he never answers my. Like I I remember Subhanallah. Um, so on my day off, I I just didn't answer the phone, mm-hmm. um, and we had the sister, a really nice sister, but. Her issue was the fact that he never answers the phone. Mm. I'm like, you always call on Mondays. Like, I, I, it's yeah. my day off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I call her back, but it's always like she's always in need right now. Like, right now something is happening. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Why? Well, I, I can't. I'm not. You know, I'm not a social worker. I'm not any of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not really nine one one kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, you have like a thousand bosses. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows. Uh, everybody knows how to do your job better than you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Allah. Yeah. So, I guess we wanted to talk about Black Panther today. Yeah. Um, so, so let me let me begin actually by by, <laughs> by maybe, maybe even making a, a disclaimer. Like, so you're an imam, really, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, um, and I guess I used to be an imam. So, what are we doing watching movies, anyways? Really, it's a good I mean, question. Yeah. You know, actually, I don't really watch movies. Um, and this is before even being an imam. Once I had a kid. I stopped going to theaters altogether. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time I do watch movies is when I'm on a plane. And you know yeah. me, sometimes I'm yeah, on yeah. like four planes in yeah, a row. Yeah, yeah. So that's the only time I watch movies. The last movie I watched was Interstellar. Movies only get really good on planes. Too, like they're really good on planes. <laughs> we get into it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're stuck. The last movie I watched on a plane, I, was, I watched Interstellar. Okay. Know Did you remember the one with um So I don't know names, eh? Like yeah, uh, names. okay, yeah, yeah. So you can make reference to like so hold on, so let me tell you something. Um so my degree is actually in communication on popular culture, right? Eh? Right. So, so you I've, should you should actually be an expert so in So I've watched so many movies like in my like you know, in getting my degree, like I've analyzed yeah. so many films. Um I've gone through all kinds of different ways of analyzing films and media and all mm-hmm. kinds of things, you know, whether whether it's the uh the critical way or the Freudism way or like yeah. all kinds of ways of like critiquing and analyzing media. Yeah. 
but I'm terrible with names. Like I just don't know names. Like if you tell me, oh, it's the movie with that guy in it. See, when he does that, the and reason like, oh, I know that. But also the reason is because it's been so long since that movie came out. Um, so that movie is the one with Matthew McConaughey. I think is the star, and it's like they're going into space. They're trying to find another planet for humans to live on. You probably did see it. Anyways, like the premise is like he gets stuck in in like this dimension in space. Oh wow! And he could see his daughter. But he can't actually reach her, and he's trying to communicate to her. You, you probably do he's know through a radio or something like that. He he was a police officer. Uh, no, he was a pilot. And it's like the end of the world. Like the mm-hmm. the world, the Earth is no longer producing crops or anything like that, and people are like, oh um, wow, like dying off, and they're trying to like. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna watch that. That's yeah, what it's interesting. Like. Anyways, the whole premise is like yeah. at some point he's just like floating in in some dimension. Mm-hmm. He can see the Earth. And all of this dimension from this yeah. other dimension, he could see his daughter and he loves his daughter so much and she loves him so much, but yeah. they can't like communicate. And I'm in a plane yeah, floating <laughs> yeah. in the air, <laughs> missing my daughter yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and like going through the same experience yeah. at the same time. So that was a really powerful experience yeah. to watch that. Uh, I'd been away for so long from them too. Yeah, well, just, so, this movie, I ended up watching it because I saw all of this crazy controversy Mm-hmm. people on facebook talking about it i saw black all panther of, black panther yeah. all of like the cultural ref- like the way that it's affecting culture right yeah. now and same time so all of this kind of been like made me be like okay i should probably watch this movie yeah. and i think sometimes even though we definitely shouldn't be watching too much television or movies that you know, we need to be connected at some point to people's culture, right? Mm-hmm. How else are you going to be talking to kids that go to Islamic schools and give them talks? And you know, they all yeah. watch the movie, right? Yeah. And uh, things like this are like, you have to be able to connect to them on a cultural level, right? Yeah. So, and this is actually, it's an important thing you've said, you said this. Um, so I always use this example. I say, you know, when you remember when the movie Amr al Khattab came out, the, mm-hmm. the NBC, when the one that NBC made, and every yeah. single sheikh said it's haram to watch the movie, right? Yeah. To, to watch that series, right? Every single, I don't know anyone there were except for Qardawi, and because yeah. uh, because he was he, yeah. he him and um, oh, Salman Aouda, Salman Aouda as well, yeah, Salman Aouda as well, right? Um, and uh, and and I noticed the fact that everybody was watching it. I'm like, well, every single <laughs> sheikh is telling you not to, but yet you're watching it, and that to me like screamed the fact that there's a complete disconnect between. The people and the shiur, you know what I'm saying? When it's you true. just tell them, yeah, you're just telling them, don't do this. And they're just doing it regardless, even though they yeah. know your opinion, you know that you're. So, and, and, and the shiur weren't able to actually give any sort of like concrete reasons for why you shouldn't do mm-hmm. this. You know what I'm saying? I remember this was like, um, it, was, it was really problematic. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. everybody was saying, like, this, this show is so good. Yeah. And people are saying it's not just, it wasn't just good, like, Production wise, it was like strengthening my iman. So people were saying yeah, that. People were saying like, that. Yeah, people I did were hear like, that from people. Yeah, they're like, oh man, yeah. watching Amr al Khattab strengthened my iman. And he was like, I felt so good about, you know, yeah. about. And, and there's an importance, like, um, into. You know, you know. So I studied public culture. So I, I have a different kind of idea on on the importance of it. I think it's really important for people, for a people, to produce culture. Right, I mean, that's really crucial. Mm. Whether it's um, uh, through storytelling, through you know, films, documentaries, um, even even sketches and 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 uh, plays and all these yeah. kinds of things. As long as they they stay within the actual Sharia limit, you know. What I mean? mm-hmm. Like that's that's perfect. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. And it should actually we should actually increase it. It shouldn't be like your date and like everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's your life is to watch them and, and to and to do that. But I think it's really important for a a people to create that because then that's how you tell your story to the rest of the world exactly. and how people are right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where we like we don't tell our stories, and then other people tell the stories and we get for angry. us and we get upset yeah. and, and because they can't tell it the way that we are telling it right? exactly. and we, we always say oh well they, they they told it the wrong way well of course they don't know us they mm-hmm. don't know what our story is in the first place and when they try to tell it uh mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know what i mean they they just see it from i guess really a superficial way which, yeah. really they have this like another sort here to it you know so. um so what did you think of the movie though so Okay, I was gonna ask you. To get yeah, you, yeah. Okay, get okay, your okay, okay. Thoughts first, but okay, I'll tell you my my perspective. Yeah. I I think I got overhyped. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think I saw like all the crazy messages on Facebook. And I even tried to not like, anytime somebody wrote something on Facebook yeah. about like Black Panther on Twitter, yeah. I tried not to read it because I didn't want to like spoil it for myself. Uh, but still, you know, I could see all these people posting about it. It's so amazing. It's this people post- posting pictures and themselves going yeah. to watch it multiple times. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is like a groundbreaking movie. Um, and I went and I saw it. And I was like, I think they overhyped it for me. I yeah. think they put it on a high pedestal. You thought you thought it'd be something else. <laughs> yeah, I thought. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It was a good movie. I just mm-hmm. they they kind of put it at like a different level than I thought yeah. it was going to be. I, I don't know what your impressions were. I I really liked it. I thought um, the way I see movies is really weird because I studied I studied right. them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so before I even have my degree in popular culture, I actually went to film school. So I actually know like I look at the technical mm. things behind. Right. It. And so I thought the cinematography was really awesome. I thought the mm-hmm. set designing was really, really cool. Um, yeah. I thought the acting was just amazing. Yeah. Um, and the complexity of like the, the characters, I thought that was really, really good. Uh, like all of these things. And, and, and I mean, like just the actors, right? I mean, you know, yeah. there's only like only two really well-known actors, like besides right. Whitaker and, and um, I forgot her name, um, the one who won the Oscars. Yeah, the one who's uh, oh man, maybe we should have their names. <laughs> Wouldn't that be important to have? Or is he seen to pull this stuff out? <laughs> yeah, but is is like besides those two, there weren't really any like overly famous people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I thought the Black Panther himself was really, you know, what I mean? like really good. Yeah. Um, he came across as like believable, not believable, just like like almost like, like I always became emotional. You know what I mean when he would talk. Right? Uh, you, did you mean uh, Angela Bass- Bassett? No, no, no. I, so Angela Bassett had it's a really a small, small role. Small yeah, role, she wasn't really anything at all. But uh, um, and Angela Bassett can't do a bad job, to be honest with you. Yeah, she's just she's just, like she's just, a, just a good actress, <laughs> like regardless of what anyone says, right? Uh, um, Nikita. Right. What uh, is her real name? Is, I can't uh, believe Lupita. I, hmm? Lupita. Lupita, uh, yes, yeah. Salah. Yeah. yeah. So Lupita, that, and 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 <clears throat> I've seen uh, one scene for her from a previous film, and I thought she was like a really good actress. Yeah. So she can, you know, um, and so that's really kind of, I guess, really from like a high level, what I thought of the film itself. Yeah. And then there was a, uh, I got into a, a bit, honestly, a, a little bit of a deeper thinking about it, and the symbolism within it was really mm-hmm. amazing to me, you know. Um, right. The fact that you have a film that's a hundred percent made by black people, yeah, you know, what I mean, that to me was like really cool. Like, yeah. just, you know, it, it, I, I was really impressed. Like, I had a big smile on my face the whole time about it. And like the inverse of instead of having like a all white cast with a token black yeah, guy, it's yeah, all black with yeah, a token white guy. Yeah, and that was, I was, you know, it's so weird because it was just kind of cool. Like, so I'm gonna tell you something. So right. coming coming from Sudan. Um, there's this big debate whether we're black or not black people. Mm-hmm. Right? Black people don't consider us as black people, and and why you know Arabs don't consider us as, as Arabs. Yeah. Right? So we have this like big debate. So like foot in both doors. Yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> we have this big debate over Sudanese people whether we're actually black or not, and even yeah. like half of Sudan always thinks you know whether we're black or not. Mm-hmm. But growing up in Canada, for instance, like uh, and also growing up in the area where I was at, um, the mm-hmm. Niagara region. I grew up in the Niagara region. It was either you're either black or white. There mm-hmm. wasn't like a middle thing. Like I was never called brown until I came to <laughs> Toronto. And I, <laughs> what's brown you know like that to me was like a weird thing right but like living in in the Niagara area uh I, I had black friends i grew up with with black culture mm-hmm. with black music yeah uh, i don't think i can ever like relate there and there was also like a lot of um african canadians that i used to grow up with ones who right. like just they don't even know where they came from they're just here yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. and those are the people who I think thought you know would, would think of this film in a completely different way than I than I do right, right. so I don't want to honestly ever like speak on their behalf because mm-hmm. I haven't really gone through the the struggle or anything yeah. like that but I do I do really appreciate um having lived you know what I mean that kind of life mm-hmm. uh I haven't been called the n-word <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying or I've been stopped by police multiple times in Toronto in the mm-hmm. Niagara region I, I know for no other reason besides the fact that I I'm not white you know mm-hmm. Um, and also, um, w- when I see the lack of representation of people who look like me on on films, you know what I mean, yeah. um, in on TV, on TV. When I saw, you know what I mean, like the fact that there's black people, mm-hmm. like 
taking on, you know what I mean, like this project. And they weren't like, it wasn't like Boys in the Hood. It wasn't like people are doing terrible, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then let's go ahead and like move out the hood, man. Like it wasn't like that. They were like, yeah. no, we got it. This is good. We have this yeah. uh, gold, right? And, and they're telling, uh, not really gold. I don't, should we spoil it for people? I don't even know if we should spoil it. But they, I they think, have this vibranium. I think you and I were like the last people to watch this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Like they have this vibranium that yeah. they have, right? And, and. And but they're not telling everybody in the world about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they're living good, but then to everybody else, oh, we're a third world uh, country, right? Mm -hmm. Like what kind of, you know, mm -hmm. what kind of? And I, and I loved it. I was like, oh, this is so cool. You know, mm -hmm. like for once, uh, an African um, country doesn't come across as as poor as needing help. Yeah. And at the same time, as corrupt. Do you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. to you? Like that to me was like a really important thing because yeah. African countries come across as corrupt. Yeah. Even when we make, even even when African Americans make films, you know what I mean? When yeah. they portray Africans, they portray them as like really primitive, yeah. uh, really backwards, you know what I mean? And it's they come, true. yeah. Um, and it's like they're advanced within like their own culture. Like yeah. Not advanced as in. Hey, we've replicated yeah. the West. Yes, the advanced, but we've yeah, and and that's so, it was yeah. so cool to me that yeah. um, you can be advanced, but yet there was still like African uh, art. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, the African culture was still out there. That like the dances, mm -hmm. the clothing, all these things. We didn't be like, oh, okay, well now we're advanced. Let's go ahead and wear jeans. Yeah, you know, or, right. or anything like that. It was like people were still were comfortable. Like even the shots mm -hmm. in the market. You know what I mean? When, yeah. when the Black Panther's talking to people in the market, they're wearing like African clothing. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is so cool. I felt like I felt like almost back home a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I, I in in Sudan, for instance, in Khartoum, uh, there's a couple of markets who look exactly like that. You mm -hmm. know, like this is really cool. Like I like this. Yeah. Uh, in the way that that it was, and I like that because they had like this like futuristic, like really expensive corporate yeah. part of the city. Yeah. And then you go out to like the like the farmlands and yeah. you see like the people in really traditional clothing and then you go into like the marketplace like on the street level and people yeah just, and you yeah. see like the different like it's just normal yeah and that's and that's how we uh, how we are in canada you know exactly, what I mean? like you yeah. go to toronto it's a certain way you go to you know the the, the farmland it's yeah. a certain way you go yeah and that's like cool. the details is crazy yeah it's it's yeah. really cool uh so it doesn't look like it's not like dubai yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. You see what I'm saying to you because to 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 unfortunately to Arabs and and a lot, you know I don't want to say to everybody I don't want to generalize everybody but to a lot of Arabs and a lot of Muslims for instance, mm. the epitome of like uh, technological advancement in the Arab world is Dubai, right? Yeah. It's like you're, you're building like these like, huge buildings mm -hmm. in you know and it doesn't look really it doesn't look good you know what I mean? yeah. these guys were advanced but yet they made it look really cool yeah. Right, so they celebrated history, but at the same time, they have all this like technological advancement that yeah. just you know, um, you know, and, and, and so so that's one of the things. The, the other thing is, and that's really what's also uh, I was really like happy with. Uh, I've got lots to say, so cool. you, you guys going, be patient. Huh? <laughs> yeah, um, how the leadership was like concerned for the people. <laughs> <laughs> See, what does it happen in Africa? What are you guys talking about? I, I was, I was like, there's no way. I come from countries where the leadership don't care. They don't care, bro. They, they you know, they want to get yeah. rich and they want to, you know what I mean. And, and everybody else can be poor. Yeah. And as a North African, I agree with this. Every, everywhere in Africa, that's the case. Like, yeah, if you yeah. think about it, like which country in Africa right now can you say, oh, they have. Um, a leadership that's not accused of some sort of corruption. You you won't find any <laughs> South Africa, maybe. What are you talking about? They no. just they just got rid of the, their their president right. yeah, because you know what I mean. Like I forgot about and that. Their own party, his <laughs> own party, got rid of him. Yeah. So like the 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 politics of what's happening versus like you know what we want to be. And and mm -hmm. let's be honest, issues are happening in Africa. I'm one of those people who always says to you, listen, yeah. issues that happen in Africa. Are mainly caused because of um, uh, colonization. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm comfortable with this. You know, you look yeah. at the history of what's been happening, um, uh, the way Africa has been abused by the colonizers, mm -hmm. and I actually loved how they use that that, that term. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? like you, you know, what I mean? in the movie itself, because I was so cool. I, I, and you know, I watched it in um, in Curtis. Curtis yeah. is like really white area, <laughs> but when they said colonizer, I. It just broke up in like this laughter. I was just, just like going nuts, and and as I'm walking out, um, um, 
I look at the guy with the tickets and I was like, oh, shit, just call this guy a colonizer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, just, I, was, I was so happy. It's, it's so weird. You know, movies yeah. like give you that kind of feeling. So <clears throat> those are the, the feelings that, that, that I came across mm. with. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just juxtaposing Black Panther against this show that's become really popular amongst some Muslims. On my Facebook feed, it's like all, all over. I don't mm-hmm. know about yours. Uh, it's a Turkish show called Urtugal. Yeah. Um, and Urtugal is basically the show of, uh, Urtugal is actually a historic figure, um, although there's not actually that much known about him. He is the father of Osman, and Osman is the founder of the Uthmani uh, oh, the Khilafah. The, oh, okay. The, the oh, that's Empire. cool. I haven't yeah. watched the show. <clears throat> so it's an interesting show. It's on Netflix. First mm-hmm. two seasons are on Netflix. Uh, pace yourself. First season's like seventy-five episodes. Yeah. Second season's like, like one hundred and thirty. Like, all Turkish TVs like though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, apparently, somebody told me actually the episodes are two hours long. Oh, and they broke um, them up. But they broke them up into one-hour mm-hmm. segments. Um, it's a very interesting show. So the production quality of the show is excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sword fight scenes are pretty good. I mean, there's too many of them. Every episode, there has to be yeah. a sword fight, but yeah. uh, they're still pretty good, like choreography, all of that. And it's, it's Turkish produced? It's, it's all Turkish produced, uh, Turkish actors. The acting is actually, you know, for a Turkish show. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about it, comparing it to like Egyptian shows and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. The acting's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, I think for that audience, people would think the acting is amazing because I think yeah, they like overly, dr- yeah, 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 overly dramatic yeah, yeah, yeah. scenes and stuff yeah. over there. Um, and some of the actors are actually quite good. Um, but like, part of me is like, is this actually good or am I just so craving mm-hmm. this type of show? Yeah. Because I'll tell you, like you watch the show and the hero is obviously Urtul mm-hmm. and you know, his, he has these Alps who are like his co his like, uh, warriors who fight with him and uh they're honorable they're honest they have like dignity yeah um they treat women well Mm. they are merciful you know even when he's having a sword fight and the guy drops his sword he'll put down his sword and fight him like with honor right yeah (laughs) Yeah. stuff like that and then the enemy in the show is these you know the templar knights the crusaders Mm -hmm. and they depict them as and they're like these white europeans and they depict them as being depraved as being incredibly cruel even to their Mm -hmm. own people Mm -hmm. as being um you know oppressive even to christians as trying to sow discord in the world um and so like so they're speaking the truth about them (laughs) basically Basically, (laughs) um but it's like this huge i mean when you watch it you're just like it's like it's filling this void where you never saw a muslim being portrayed as a hero in a show before Mm-hmm. And, you know, actually the enemies are, you know, the people who are always generally portrayed yeah. as heroes. And it's almost, it made me, like, it makes you look past some of the failings in the show. Because when I start thinking, about, like, I asked some of my friends who watch it, I'm like, mm-hmm. do you guys think this is a really good show? Or do you think we're just craving this so much? We're yeah. just, like, boosting it up. And some of them are like, no, it's awesome. It's amazing. I'm like, but, you know, the overarching plot is pretty good. The actual storyline has a lot of like too- plot holes in oh, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and you know stuff like that's really I think it'd be repetitive. Too complex as well, right? Like if you're making it this like this long of a show and this this many episodes, yeah. right? That and then there's just all these like plot holes that come out of nowhere, and you're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. come on, how is this realistic? But yeah. you know they're just doing it to extend the story and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Um, and then when I bring that up, then people are like, yeah, actually, it's true. It's <laughs> there's there's, yeah. there's some issues in this yeah. story, but we're just like, craving that, and I felt like. The same thing. I mean, I went. I saw it kind of like in the daytime. It's the only time I have mm-hmm. time. Um, and there's a lot of people there. Some people were on their own, like mm-hmm. they just came on their own to watch it. And there's obviously a bunch of um, black people were there watching yeah. it. And I could tell they're getting this reaction from them. And I get. I was getting yeah. it to an extent too, yeah. right? Probably not as much as them, but yeah. for me as well, like to see that that difference where. F- you know, the people yeah. who are always it's, assumed it's, to be in control or yeah. not in control. People are always assumed to be advanced or not advanced. Yeah. You know, and it was an interesting dynamic. But it, it's so, it, but it, it, you know, the, the positive thing about it, I guess, really, um, it's not like they made them as like, uh, you know, they made their the Americans as bad people. That's not what no, they did they at didn't all. Do that, you, yeah. you see what I'm saying to you? Um, they did make them, and it's, it's interesting to me. Yeah. That was a very interesting part of the plot. They did make them like in need of aid. 
Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we should help them, you know, yeah. they, which is like, which was the coolest thing. I'm which like, yes. Which is the way Americans see Africa. Exactly. Right? That's exactly how they see us. Like, oh, let's mm-hmm. go ahead and send them some money. Let's go ahead and send them some aid. Let's go ahead. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, I, I mean, I, I personally think that's a part of the problem in Africa is the fact that they've been get, getting hand out a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, aid always comes with strings attached. Yeah. As, well, I mean, aid in itself is not a positive thing. It's never been a positive. No, yeah. no person will always tell you like giving money to poor countries is actually good. They'll yeah. tell you <laughs> getting them out of the problem that they're in is a better option. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Than just give, handing them money, right? Mm. Especially when they're corrupt. And, and they're, um, you know. But that's on purpose, usually. Yeah, I mean, of course. If you, watch, uh, if you re- read um, your Confessions of an Economic Hitman, I know it's like mm. an old book now, but he talks about how like, you know, aid or... Um, you know, loans from the World Bank and how these are used yeah. to kind of keep countries the, down the elite in yeah. charge, the corrupt elite in charge, yeah. and to give you leverage over the corrupt elite as well. Yeah. So that you can continue to have unfettered access to that country, right? Yeah. So yeah. I mean that's kind of the function of AIDS uh, often yeah. just very rarely have anything to do with helping people. Yeah. And that's why when when uh when Black Panther came and set up like he bought Mm-hmm. He didn't say, "Oh, I took over, or I'm setting up." He's like, "Oh, I bought this area yeah. here, and I bought this." So he's not yeah. like going to give them aid. He's not sending them money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's coming in like from the proper, and that's the way that I think Africans see the the fact. Right. Like, if you want to help us, come and invest in our countries. You know what I mean? Right. Come on, give us these kinds of. Don't just give us money. Don't just give our uh, your money to our president. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, and, and then yeah. have them. Uh, you know, speak like speaking of this, like kind of corruption. I'll tell you how how bad this is. So, um, in the eighties, I used to live in Sudan, right? Um, mm. I was really young, but the U.S. aid and the U.N. aid that used to come, right? They would. They, I, I remember this. They would send them in like in like these planes, right? Um, and even though it's supposed to be given to people for free. Mm-hmm. You, the, the people won't even hide the label of the fact that they're selling you something that's labeled UN aid or US aid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like the guy is, is pouring out sugar from like, a, you know, like, like a, a pail that's like labeled UN aid. You know what I mean? Like, like, but this is aid. Like, you can't sell this. And mm-hmm. the guy's like, well, I bought it. Who did you buy it from? You know? And you go ahead and you trace it. You'll find the fact that, you know, whomever is in charge sold it. You, oh, yeah. you see what I'm saying yeah. to you? And uh, it's just, it's just corruption over corruption f- forever, mm. you know what I mean? And yeah. and 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 um, this film kind of, I guess, really for me made me kind of forget, you know what I mean? The mm-hmm. fact that like you know, like I come from this kind of this kind of place. Well, I did think it was interesting because the show, well, both Urtogod and yeah. Black Panther have this theme that um, the only thing that keeps us down is when we fight each other. Yeah, and we're we're like corrupt mm-hmm. against each other and harming each yeah. other. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now on to the <clears throat> controversial thing that was brought up <laughs> about the Black Panther <laughs> um, that everybody was arguing about. When yeah. I, I was like avoiding the comments because I'm like, I didn't see this <laughs> movie. I don't want it to get yeah. ruined. But the allegation that uh, Black Panther is Islamophobic. And I wanted to get your take on that. So, And I mean, you especially, like you have a, a foot in being black and yeah. being arab yeah. at the same time so i'm gonna be really care- interesting I, i'm gonna be honestly real be, i'm gonna be really careful in uh trying to express I, I guess really like an opinion um based on the fact that that i am black or anything as such mm-hmm. i do want to point out a couple of things before we, we, you know uh, so there is a really complex relationship between africans and islam Mm-hmm. It's not a simple relationship. You know, you know what I'm saying to you? Right. Uh, and it's not like all rosy either. It's mm-hmm. not just nice. You know what I mean? Like, I, th- I think Muslims really forget the fact that, um, and I don't say between Islam and Africans, so between Muslims mm-hmm. and, and Africans. Right. You know? uh, bad things have happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where a lot of Africans don't like Muslims. I mean, to be really frank, mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of them. You know what I mean? And I, and I see it. So, so Sudan is a perfect example. For Sudan, uh, until 2005, was a one country. Uh, the north was Muslim. The south was, um, they say mostly Christian, but I mean, we know mm-hmm. that they were just like uh, uh, tribal. Right. Or, or really, I guess, in a sense, that they had their own kind of religions, right? Yeah. Uh, they had a lot of Christians, right? Mm-hmm. But there was a, a serious problem in how the North, the Muslim North, has dealt with Africans, um, uh, with with the South 
uh, Sudanese people. And the South are not Arab, right? So the South are not Arab, right? Yeah. So, I mean, all of Sudan is not really Arab. They, they speak yeah. Arabic. Like, so if you think about yeah. it, right, the Arab Mustaraba, you know what I mean? So even if you go all into... All of us are not, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's so weird because even the... Like, so hold on. So if you go to the South right now, okay, yeah. the official language in Juba, for instance, is English. But the second spoken language is what they call uh, Arabi Juba, which is the... Uh, Juba Arabic mm -hmm. You know what I mean And anyone can get away uh, Get along Like you can go to Juba today And speak, and speak Arabic, Arabic and, and they'll listen to you yeah. uh, It'll take you a day or two No more than that To understand what they're talking about Because mm. it's just like Really broken uh, or, You know Like a low yeah. form of Arabic Right But does that make them Like Arabs or non-Arabs I, I don't really know You know what I'm saying yeah, That's true Yeah uh, What you can tell for sure though Is that they're not the vast majority of them are not Muslims, right? Mm -hmm. And there were fights, man. Like there were like some serious, serious fights that happened between Muslims and and Christians. And it was always over the fact that, for some reason, um, the Muslim the the Muslim Africans. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get into a lot of trouble in saying some <laughs> of these things today. A lot of the uh, Muslim Africans have always thought that they should have the upper hand. In ruling over um, everybody, mm. you know what I mean, and that's a, a serious problem. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean right. to you? So when you when you think about it in a sense of like, okay, is this film Islamophobic or it's not Islamophobic? First of all, there's one reference to Muslims mm. in it. Um, the the guy who says, "Wallahi, I will shoot them," and this is at the beginning scene, right? right. And then uh, Lupita was one of the the, the girls who who uh, who was abducted by right. clearly Boko Haram. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something: Boko Haram is not <laughs> is not is not a Muslim group that's threatening non-Muslims. Boko Haram mm -hmm. is a crazy group of Muslims, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, who's threatening Muslims way more than non-Muslims. Let's be yeah. very honest. You know what I'm saying? Like the kind of, the, the, the number of people that they have harmed mm -hmm. is far greater within the Muslim camp than the non-Muslims. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, so the idea is that they had uh, abducted these girls and and we don't know whether these girls are Muslims or not. And that's the thing that I that I always want to look at. Yeah. I mean, sure. there's the reference of the fact that they took off their hijab or the covering. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something really interesting. The covering that they took off is an actual Arab covering anyways. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you see what's happening here? But they had like an, uh, like a, like an African style covering. style covering on their heads, yeah. which I know from my country where I come from, there's a lot of women who wear hijab like that. Mm -hmm. That's their hijab, you know, the African way of wearing hijab. Especially, right. uh, especially uh, sisters from like like uh, the west of Sudan or in south of Sudan when mm -hmm. they become Muslims. That's how they wear their hijab. They don't wear the Arabic style or what, what nowadays we would refer to as like the the Somali kind of you know right. hijab stuff like that, right? <laughs> it's tarha. It's not tarha. It's almost like a khimar, right? What they were wearing is almost like a khimar, yeah, kind of like yeah. So I didn't be like, I, when they took it off, I wasn't like, oh, they're non-Muslim girls and now, you know, and now they're free. Like, I, I didn't really think tell. that at all. I, yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, well, they were forced to wear something mm -hmm. for any reason, whether it's to um, hide them, whether it's to make them look like the women that, you know, that these men are yeah, married yeah. to, whatever, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. didn't think at that moment is the fact that, okay, they're non-Muslim women because the moment i thought about the whole idea of like they look like boko haram because he was in nigeria like mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah I, I was like okay well they could be muslims or non-muslims yeah it, 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 very frank um i would have thought the film was islamophobic had they had made a reference for instance to a shabab mm -hmm. you know what i mean because a shabab is the kind of group that um what they do is before they kill anybody they say hey Muslims on the side, Christians on the side, you know, yeah. right. and they go ahead and slaughter the Christians, and they tell the Muslims run. Right. You know what I mean? Um, that that would have been like, okay, that's that's a bad reference. Like, like, mm -hmm. why did the filmmaker make that reference? Right. But the reference that he's making to Boko Haram is 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 a is a, is a problematic um, group mm -hmm. that is in the largest country mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of number, really, in Africa, like that the, the highest, you know. Very highly dense, like yeah. like like Nigeria is 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 is, is an amazing country. You know, I've always yeah. wanted to visit Subhanallah, uh, but I have so many like friends from Nigeria who I just I just love the way that they are. You know what I mean? And how yeah. uh, and how it, it as a country itself, 
you can't tell whether people are really Christians or Muslims. Right. You, you, you know what I mean? Unless you kind of like dig a little bit deeper, yeah. but you just meet them like on on just like a general level. You, you can't really tell them people are friendly to one another. You know what yeah. I mean? So I didn't think it was Islamophobic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be really honest with you. I did not think at all uh, that it was any, there was any sense of uh, Islamophobia in it. Sure. I did see it with my daughter, however. And okay. one of the questions, and that's the, that's the thing that made me feel like a little funny about it, mm -hmm. is that what on the drive home, she just asked out of nowhere, she's like, Baba, is, is the term Wallahi an Arabic or an Islamic phrase? Mm -hmm. just, she's, she's making that connection already. Yeah, you, see what, you yeah. see what I'm saying to you? So I can see the problem. Like yeah. I can see there is some sort of problem that's happening here that you do need to unpack the film itself in order mm -hmm. for you to know is it... Or is it not? And it's a, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's 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 a problem. So if you if you if you want to, if you want to expect everybody who's going to watch the film to be a smart person, yeah. Uh, for instance, um, you're you're going to get into trouble. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Because films are just popular culture, right? Yeah. Um, and by the way, uh, the country, you know, in Sudan where I come from, um, interestingly enough. Uh, the term wallahi is used by both christians and muslims interesting yeah because yeah, yeah. Because, I, because by because, nigeria would it be hmm? i don't know if it would be in nigeria that's the thing right yeah. but i like to me in sudan for instance christians would say wallahi right. because allah is the name of allah allah means god in arabic <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it yeah. doesn't matter which country you come from so if you want to swear by allah you say wallahi you, I don't remember. I heard it when I used to live in Egypt. I used to people people would swear by Al Masih. You know what I mean? I've heard that in Egypt. Yeah. I never heard that in Sudan. You know, even though I had Christian friends and Coptic friends, but they would never do that. You know, yeah. what I mean? they would just say Wallahi, and they had names similar to like, to like, to like Muslims. Like, like I remember a Christian Omar. I remember a Christian Ahmed. I remember, you know what I mean? It was like right. it was so weird to me. Now that I'm grown, right, and think about it, but this this was the case all the time, right? Yeah. Um, so th that's really kind of the, 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 the my thoughts on it. Um, another thing that I actually want to mention, and I guess really this is really important to also kind of think about. There's this big debate between like scholars of communication and popular culture. Um, is that does popular culture depict reality or does reality follow? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, does it inspire reality? Or? Yeah, like which which one is which, right? <clears throat> like everybody's in agreement the fact that popular culture has to have some sort of reference to reality, right? You know, that's 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 by definition. If you want to define what popular culture is, it's popular yeah. culture. It it makes reference to other popular culture. It also makes reference to reality. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's the way that you actually like. Okay, this is <laughs> popular, and this is a film, right? Yeah. So if you want the film to look like it's real. You have to reference some sort of real things that are happening. I mean, mm -hmm. they were in uh, in in um, in the U.S. They're in Compton, right? Right. That's, that's where it was at, right? Yeah. And um, it, it's it's interesting. I, I'm gonna say this is so funny because I heard actually that in Compton when this film came, you know, when it, when this film was coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, when he showed Compton. The people in the theater, so they said, you know, they started screaming, the yay, yay, the, 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 you know, the, the ice cube thing, right? So it's, yeah. it's a reference to their, where they come from, you know what right. I'm saying? And, and, and that's like the cool thing about it. Um, but now when you go ahead and you re refer to, to, to like um, Boko Haram, it's, it's an international issue that's happening that people should pay attention to. I mm -hmm. actually think the filmmakers are trying to speak something a little bit bigger than, you know, just as a, as a reference to just make sure we're in Africa. Or not. But the idea is that, like, listen, we need to pay attention to what uh, the people in uh, Boko Haram is doing in Nigeria. You, right. you know what I mean? Like there's, there's, there's things that are, they're doing that are just not appropriate and the rest of the world doesn't care. Yeah. They don't care. You know what I'm saying? So part of the, I think the point that the other folks were making was that they were saying, well, why didn't you mention like the Lord's army? Or I, why didn't you mention like the Christian militias in um, Central, or Central African Republic? Yeah. And uh, I do, and I did question that as well. I mm -hmm. said, why didn't they, like the Lord's army? So, yeah. you know, uh, being also being from Sudan, like I know so much about them because yeah. they were tampering so much with like South Sudan, right? The Lord's right. army, right? Uh, <laughs> why didn't they? Yeah. But again, I always want to have like that idea of like, like it's art and the artist is free to choose. You know, you right. know what I'm saying? Based on just like his storyline, like, yeah. like just whatever he wants, like why not? You know, so when Bona made his film, um, I remember uh, um, 
So I'm an associate producer on that film. So just, just mention the full, film. Full disclaimer. People to... Okay, so uh, uh, Tug of War. Right. Okay. I came on a project really late, but I was a part of it as, as mm-hmm. they were editing it. And and, uh, and one of the things that people were always questioning Bona on, right? Like they were asking, mm-hmm. like, why, like, why would you tell such a story? It's an Islamophobic story almost. Like you're playing mm-hmm. into uh, what people people's perception is, is uh, you know of, of and, and you're oversimplifying how people how uh, extremism happens and all of these kinds of things right so for people who don't know the the premise of tug of war is uh, about a a young guy muslim kid who's going through a lot of difficulties hardships just out of prison and kind of like talks about how or shows you how he's getting pushed into extremism and and that tug of war basically yeah. that he's he's yeah. going through and, and and I remember the answer that he would give was would be like a complex answer, you know, how I think this way and how I think. And one time uh, I was asked this um, when I was with him on stage. I said, you guys, it's art. Like, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> you know, like it's, sometimes, it's really sometimes as simple as that. Like, I yeah. can just do whatever I want. It's what came in my mind. It's what uh, I read about. It's what I have an interest in. It's what I really want to highlight. Whatever it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that doesn't mean at any given point that his... Uh, he's trying to make a point, right? You know, counter another one. It's, it's not what he's what he's doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you know, it is something I actually really wanted to say when I saw one of the uh, the 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 comment on Facebook. I think we really have to be careful in highlighting um, differences between Muslims and Africans mm-hmm. because that's a that's a that's a deep. Um, it's a deep problem that you're digging into. So this is problematic. You know what I'm saying? For you to go ahead and to yeah. highlight things that uh, that can even cause more of an issue. Like you've got to be a bit more sensitive than that. There's problems that have happened between Muslims, right? African Muslims and non-Muslim Africans. You know point. what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 you and you and you cannot go ahead and perpetuate this kind of like idea of like oh they they want Muslims to look bad or anything. And like do you such. think like some African Muslims are feel feel that you know, tug of war that between their Africanness plus their Muslimness, yeah. and that. I mean, I, I mean, I don't yeah. know, but like, you come from Egypt, and Egypt has like an Azhar and has all these places, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, yeah. so it's like a big, a big thing. But I, I want to yeah. tell you something. I know for a fact uh, when I used to live in Saudi, yeah. okay, when I would wear the Sudanese thobe, you know, you yeah. know, um, and uh, I would, I would, I would be standing for salah or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. When I would step up to lead salah. Mm-hmm. Because you know somebody would pull, and this happened to me twice, by the way, not mm-hmm. once. That a Saudi guy would pull me back. Interesting. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So uh, this doesn't happen in Canada, Alhamdulillah, because yeah. I, I won't allow it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but in Saudi, right? Like when this when 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 a Saudi guy pulls you back and he's like, yeah. no, 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 like you you can't pray. And I don't I don't speak back. I don't have yeah. really an issue of speaking back, even though I know I'm qualified to yeah. <laughs> to lead salah, you know, and it's just general people it's not like in a mosque or anything like it just yeah. would be like hanging out in a place like, okay let's go ahead and lead to like in, in car four for crying out loud if wow. you're if you're shopping or whatever it is they close the the mall yeah. you want to do the salah or whatever and i would stand up people and i don't know how you know saudis are, are um good people mm. uh most of them <laughs> so what they do is like they just look at people's faces and they see oh this guy has a beard uh he looks yeah. like a student of knowledge of some sort, right? So they would just kind of go ahead and and, and allow me to lead salah, right? And mm-hmm. and it happened many times, but twice, you know, uh, two older people, you know, like the uncles, yeah. right? They pulled me back, right? And one of them was really angry about the fact that oh, we don't know what kind of Sufism he's into. That's mm-hmm. what he says, like out loud. They associate right? your Sudan. Sudanese yeah, exactly. Right. And the other guy didn't even say anything. I don't yeah. know what he's thinking, you know. Yeah. But there was not, there was no difference between me and them except for like you see me, like Mike. I I can pass for Saudi. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I sure. mean. Um, and that like that's the first time I kind of felt like there was some sort of uh, funny mm-hmm. business between really Africans and, right. and non-Africans, right? Yeah. Uh, this, this discussion has, has happened also as well, you know, back home. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I've had a lot of discussion back home, where a lot of uh, people in the north of Sudan, for instance, they want to become a part of the Arab world. Mm-hmm. They're part of the Arab League, and not not only are they yeah. the part of the Arab League, they are the founders of the Arab League. Like, yeah, you know, true. like the first Arab conference that's ever happened happened in Sudan because so. Khartoum at that time was the most advanced. It's really unfortunate when you talk about all these other things, they get really like <laughs> upset, right? Like it was the most advanced <laughs> yeah. city, and it was the only one that was ready to hold one right away. They had all yeah. these kinds of like. Uh, all this kind of money, you know, and they, they can do it, right? Um, and 
and I remember those times when Sheikh Zayed, for instance, would come and he would like pick uh, people from the army so they can go and train like UAE. Right. You know what I mean? Like all these kinds of things. And then, and then when teachers would go to teach in Saudi, yeah. uh, I remember my mom, for instance, was highly recruited by uh, by Bahrain when the, the, they started the first, like this is so weird, the first right. women university. You know what I mean? Like right. in like like the 90s and yet yeah. Sudan had one since the 60s you know mm-hmm. you, you see what I'm saying to yeah. you um, but I mean things are, have changed right um, yeah. clearly but I do feel like honestly like 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 there, there's a problem with racism you know and it, yeah. on our show you know on let the Quran speak we've yeah. spoken to so many people where we uh, where we talk about the issue of anti-black racism in the community mm-hmm. I always tell people you know sometimes I, it depends on what kind of like curl activator I put in my hair you know what I mean I, 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 can, like, I can deal with, with trouble honestly like, like if my hair is short I look black guess what's gonna happen yeah. you know I fit with this kind of group right if, if I let my hair grow a little bit uh, I, you know and I use uh, you know somebody's curl activator and then, then <laughs> i fit in with the, like with the brown kind of thing yeah but but it's it's a, it's a it's a real problem you know what i'm saying huh. and and muslims really have to be aware of these things before they just go ahead and be like oh this film was islamophobic or right. you know. so i don't know if you saw imam dawood walid in the u.s he put out a video mm-hmm. on this uh it was entitled is this black panther islamophobic mm-hmm. uh and i do respect his work uh, yeah he did a lot of work with care and and uh so we I had him on Let the Quran Speak. He was he was a, he was an amazing like episode. Yeah, yeah. He's very good. And um, I remember he wrote an article about uh, CVE, which is countering violent, yeah. violent extremism. Yeah, yeah. He I took a very good, yeah. He yeah. took a very good stand at that time. Yeah. Um, so I really do respect him. So he he put out a video. One of the things he was saying, or the basic premise of his video, was that he was saying the problem is that we're associating Islam with being Arab. Yeah, and that the Boko Haram scene shows, you know. The Boko Haram terrorists are wearing like the Arab kafia. Yeah, and um, and the women are wearing like the Arab style tarha, like you yeah. said. And then yeah. when they take it off, they're wearing more traditional yeah. clothing. And then he's like, and then the problem is when you do look at Wakanda, and what this is one of the things I was kind of confused about. So I was like, well, where's the Islam represented in Wakanda? He was like, the problem is you don't realize that a lot of the traditional clothing that was shown in yeah. Wakanda actually is clothing of. Um, African tribes that are like hundred I mean, percent like so. What, what's the name of the fifth tribe? The one that Al Jabari, yeah, Jabari, Jabari. Yeah. That's an Arabic name. I was like, I was, yeah. I was so fully aware of the fact that like, okay, Jabaris are. This is an Arabic name. I don't care what anyone yeah. says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't look like Muslims. They don't pray. They don't have like the marking of Salah on their heads. But clearly, they're like you Inspired, know what I mean. At least, yeah, they, 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 there was exactly. a lot of shirk in there. I have to admit, but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's a, it's a movie set in Africa. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know for, sure, like, for sure. But that's what you were saying. Is like the costumes were actually costumes worn by tribes that are like 100 percent muslim and but you don't associate when you see that when you see those clothing you're thinking african you're not thinking muslim muslim when you see the arab clothing you're associating it with muslim so he's like the problem is we've made this these like determinations Mm -hmm. which i agree and i think is is a call for us to think about our our biases before we even look at the movie right Mm -hmm. um but then it also makes me think about like the average american Dude who's watching this that's what I'm saying. movie, he's yeah. making those same associations yeah. too. So. That's what I'm saying. Like my daughter, for instance, when she asked me, what is it? You know, she doesn't yeah, know. She, she just know, does not right. know that Africans. I was, I, that's what I'm saying. I wasn't concerned because honestly, I didn't associate anybody with being Muslim or non-Muslim. Mm-hmm. First of all, honestly, those girls, I thought they were Muslim. The ones yeah. who took off their hijab because they right. had hijab on underneath it. They you did, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and, 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 and that's another problem is the fact that we, <laughs> we think that every single Muslim wears hijab. Right. It, it, they don't like yeah. like when you guys live. No, but I think the point there was that <laughs> like you know they took off their religion. Now they're free. So like when we take off our religion, because that's the whole association. But clearly they've taken off something that was forced. That was upon forced them, on them, regardless yeah. of what it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I and I say this to anybody. I say you can't force people to do things and expect them to expect rewards from Allah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not what happens. It's just not it's what true. happens. You know, you're misguided as as a, as a as a leader of a community or as a sheikh or whatever. If you think that, if you tell people that you have to do it otherwise, and as uh, you know. Um, I don't like to reference like countries, but I, in, in some of the countries where I think like religion is forced down people's throats, you see a lot of hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying to you. Um, and in Africa, for instance, you don't see that. Like I come, like from Sudan, for instance. Right. Uh, religious people are religious. 
mm-hmm. because religion doesn't get forced down their throats. You right. know, like they're just religious by themselves. And those who are not religious, they're just not religious. They don't care. Mm-hmm. Like there isn't a fight between them in the roads. You know what I mean? Like, right. but then there was this kind of sense of respect. And this, by, by the way, this was before the government that we have right now is there, right? Because right. Uh, this government right now, they call themselves an Islamic government. What they have done is they have politicized Islam in such a way that they mm-hmm. made the non-Islamic or non-religious people, I won't say non-Islamic, the non-religious people hate anything that's called Islamic ruling. <laughs> they right. just literally made them hate it, you know, because because Saddam Sharia uh, only included the hudud. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Sharia is only when you steal, you get your hand cut, and right. when you make zina, you get beat in the street in front of everybody. And when you know, I say that's the only yeah. Sharia. But there was no welfare, which is a part of Sharia. There was no like mm-hmm. you, you know. Um, there is no social services, which is a part of Sharia. There is right. no uh, social assistance. All of these things, which is a, which are part of Sharia, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Those don't exist, but yet the hudud exists, and therefore people don't have an understanding. They don't they don't know what Sharia is. When people say, "You know, we're gonna come and we're gonna roll in Sharia," people should be happy because mm-hmm. it's a really good thing if you think about it. Yeah. I know I say Sharia, I know everybody's <laughs> going to be like, the re- "What's it called? What's that? Uh, what's that thing called? The uh, rebels? What's it called? Rebel, Rebel media? media? Rebel media is going to be, be like, okay, this guy Trust wants me, to listening. implement Sharia in Canada. No, well, I'm speaking to you. So, <laughs> yeah. So, y- 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 you know, yeah. um, I think people get obsessed with like. And it's been a theme. I mean, this is a larger topic, but I mm-hmm. think that when people look back at the fall of the Ummah, yeah, they look at how we used to have Sharia law, and by this they mean specifically like the penal code yeah. implemented. Yeah. Hadid, and so yeah. they're like, okay, in order for us to go back to being in a time of strength and, and Muslims being honorable and whatever, we have to implement those laws. Yeah. What they don't realize is before any of those laws stop being implemented and collapsed, our hearts got disconnected from Other Islam to happen. begin with, yeah. right? Yeah. So if even if you bring back the sulta, the authority yeah. of Islam and implementing laws, mm-hmm. it's not going to bring the ummah anywhere if we don't first connect people's hearts to Islam to I begin mean, you, with. You right? even think about it in terms of like how yeah. the sulta itself and the, the strong hand of Islam came about in terms of the Prophet. It mm-hmm. didn't come the day he arrived in Medina. Like yeah. the prophet just didn't do that. They're like, okay, guys, yeah. you know, you're like, that's, that's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> There's other problems that people are dealing with. The first, you know, what is the Abdullah ibn Salam's hadith, the very famous hadith, you know, Ya Yohan Nas, Afshu Salam, Atayamu Ta'am, Wasur Arham, Wasalu Bilayunas. Like, he places the whole idea of relationship with God last. Mm-hmm. But at the beginning, let's go ahead and kind of like create a community. Let's go ahead and yeah. like say salam to each other, like say hi, hug one another, like have this kind of feeling, right? Wa Atayamu Ta'am, and then go ahead and feed one another. Uh, Create these like gatherings where things are where where people who are hungry don't have to ask; they can just come and eat without yeah. having to ask. You. So keeping the dignity for people, and uh, because he doesn't reference, uh, you know, mm-hmm. al fuqara al yeah. he doesn't reference anything. He says al So the yeah. idea is the the greetings is to be spread, and the second thing is for food to be out there so you can sit down with one, you can feel one another as really brothers. You know, yeah. you know subhanallah. I was actually uh, reading in a, in a uh, community development. Uh, book. This is really interesting. Community development book. Uh, and what they're talking about is in order for you to create some sort of community, what you need to do is you need to create what they call like uh, um, like guard letting down or, or, or activities that allow for people to let down their guards. Hmm. One of so them like eating, a meal. is eating. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I can just chit chat with you. Like yeah. if I'm eating with you, I can tell you my stories. I can tell yeah. you my issues, and you can see like from the way I'm eating. It's the yeah. first time he ate this kind of food. Is his food mm-hmm. like too below for him? Is yeah. it, you know what I'm saying to you? So you you have an idea, a, a better understanding of me as a as a human being yeah. when I'm just sitting here and eating with you. Also, I can yeah. tell you stories about my kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean when I'm eating stuff like oh, kids sure. don't really like this kind of food. You know this kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And then wasil al arham, you know, and then go ahead and. Uh, and Surat Al-Arham, by the way, I don't want to change this into a religious thing because okay. I, I don't ever want to talk really, about whatever you want to talk really about. Want to be a, I, don't, I don't ever want to be an imam again. I'm going to be honest with you. So you, you can, keep saying you can, that, but you, I don't know, man. I, I feel like you're going you to do it again. This, uh, you can cut this and post it. And, and every time I get an offer as a job, just replay it to me. Um, I'm going to give you a job offer right after this. So, one, by the way. Uh, so, so yeah. So, so the idea is, you know, Afshar Salam, Ta'am Ta'am, and then Sultan Arham, Sultan Arham. We we tend to look at it as like visitation of families, right? While mm-hmm. the scholars say what, 
امرهم بالمعروف ما دمت ابدا صح ونهي عن المنكر ما دمت ابدا يعني as long as you live you go ahead and you remove hardship from them or, or evil you know what i'm saying and you bring goodness to them you see what you see what's happening here and this is like it's what we talk about nowadays when i say when brothers come to me and they say to me my son doesn't pray anymore and i kicked him out of the house i said you're crazy you've disconnected him from the only way of him ever coming back to allah again you basically what you've done right the idea is your family members you love them uh, you know Uh, unconditionally, forever, yeah. <laughs> regardless of what it is, like you know, you always order them. My son, pray. My my daughter, uh, dress this way. Whatever it is, you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. that, that you have a, as a problem with it. But don't ever be like, okay, if you don't do this, don't come into my house again. Right. Even to your cousins, even to your children, even none of that. Why? Why would yeah. you do that? You know, you, yeah. you, you don't want to disconnect yourself from them. You want to be a You know, you want to be close to them. So when they're stuck with something, you can give them that advice and you yeah. can pull them to it, right? Uh, and then finally, which is, you know, Sallu billayli wa nasu nuyam. At the end of the day, your relationship with Allah is yours. It's your yeah. own thing. Like, don't don't bother me about your, like, your... Because nowadays, we're so concerned with the rituals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and everything else is a part of... So what we say, um, the, the sharia in itself... How was it implemented at the beginning? This is how it was implemented at the beginning. You know, mm-hmm. the Prophet wanted people to like one another, to see what's wrong with them, and to see what's happening with one another. And then, you know, um, and then we went ahead and we got into the punishment. And right. and if you think about it, I said, the punishment didn't happen that much. Yeah. We know the stories of like the people who've committed zina, very known, so, really known. Like it's so weird in the sense of the Prophet, they're very well known. The people who uh, were drunk, they were like known. Yeah. Stories are known of them. It's so weird, you know. If the, if it was like rampant, we wouldn't know. We would just be like, oh, every day the prophet got a drunk person, and he, you know, and he. But yeah. this didn't happen, you know. You know, I read something, and I tried to go back to find the reference, and I couldn't find it. But I read it. I remember reading it, and I need to find the reference for mm. it. But basically, it was like someone had done a study of the Ottoman Empire, so the, mm. like the 600 years or so that they were in power, um, and they wanted to find every case of someone having been caught for zina mm-hmm. and they said it was only like four times or five times over There 600 over 600 There years right now and like the prophet Khartoum, told us find they, ways to not apply these laws yeah like even though the laws are there yeah. find ways to not apply them yeah that's our order to not apply them as I'm much saying. as possible right yeah so so in khartoum they actually beat like <clears throat> four women a day probably for hard. like and it's not even for zina it's for a shiru for zina like you know oh, what that wow. even means it's so weird it's like oh starting to engage in zina like how do you do that like, how do you do that yeah. oh we found her wearing tight clothing yeah So that's what I mean. Like that's that has, that has nothing to do with Sharia. It has nothing yeah. to do with Quran and Sunnah. But like we're so overly obsessed with like the sulta, yeah. the the authority, the implementation of rules in people's lives, the control of people's lives. We're so focused on that, we've forgotten like, you know, the basics of the actual religion. Yeah. It's yeah. very it's very sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how we, we came I, from the movie. From, I know from here. Black Panther to here, but, I have no but, idea. <laughs> but it, it's it's so interesting because. Um, It's it's interesting actually because there's a way to tie this, which is the fact that we're so quick to judge things. Mm-hmm. I mean, even when it comes to movies, we're so quick to judge what yeah. people are thinking. So uh, I'll tell you, I saw the movie. I think I saw Yasin the same day. Mm-hmm. I came back from it, and we had this co- uh, conversation yeah. about it. And I was like, listen, if I saw that movie and nobody had raised the issue of Islamophobia, yeah, I, I would have. It never crossed my mind. Yeah. The only reason I was thinking about it was because it was already put in my head to begin yeah. with. I mean, I, again, I, I'm telling you something. Like, I didn't think. Yeah. So I read the comment by Faisal Kuti, right? Like, right. Um, and I was like, that's weird. Like, that doesn't seem like it's a very thoughtful thing. Like, that yeah. Mar- Marvel, first of all, wouldn't do it. Like, it's a right. studio, right? And then I was like, um, so I know, uh, so this is going to show a little bit funny about my things. But I know the singer, the Senegali singer, who sang mm-hmm. in the immediate, like, scene following that scene that we're talking about right and he's right. a muslim senegali singer who's really oh. famous in like in like in sudan and in, interesting you know they say people know him right i'm like this that doesn't make any sense like, <laughs> like it can't be islamophobic and using like a muslim singer right you know, after, in the one right. that follows it you know and, Putting uh, it right i did notice like that the, they had that one scene where remember they're gonna kill that guy and then she stops them and she's like actually he's a kid and he was yeah. kidnapped So I felt like they give some depth of character with that. Yeah. Um, and it was such a quick, quick scene. So you can't like build enough yeah. depth of character and whatever. But I mean, you you still have to judge this movie against 
everything else that Hollywood produces, right? Mm -hmm. So is this really Islamophobic against Homeland, against you know, 24, <laughs> against all these other shows that exist yeah. out there and movies that exist? You can't really make that claim. I, I, don't, I don't think it's Islamophobic at all, honestly, yeah. to be honest with you. I don't, yeah. I don't. I think there are some problematic scenes in it. That's the, that's, yeah. that's the worst that I can say about it. Yeah. But honestly... For the fact that this this movie is like has made me feel so good about the fact that I'm African man, I don't care. Like <laughs> you know, I'm cool. You know, I'm, honestly, I could just walk away with like, um, with 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 the Wallahi commentary. That's the only thing that really bothered <laughs> yeah, me, right? Yeah. And again, even that doesn't bother me much because I'm telling you, I know Christian Sudanese people who say Wallahi when they yeah. want it. You know, they're like, even if that's, even if the reference is like, even though I know the reference of book is to Boko Haram mm -hmm. and I have a problem with Boko Haram. It's not like yeah. I don't, it's not like I like them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't like these guys. I don't yeah. like what they're doing. I don't like the way that they're uh, making Islam look. Uh, I don't like their understanding of the religion. I think they're wrong. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I think, uh, not enough has been done about them um, in, if, you know, in the world. And I think if this movie can at yeah. least just highlight the fact that these guys are here stealing women for kind of lot, like what kind of Muslims do that yeah. anyways, bro? Like that to me is like the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. Who goes and 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 and, and like kidnaps women? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's just it's just so weird. Even though, by the way, the guy who uh, he looks just like Abu Bakr. Um, the leader of that scene, I don't know if she's, he looks exactly like Abu Bakr, who's the leader of the of the Boko Haram guys. I didn't make a connection. He that looks just like him. It was so weird to me. I was like, oh, huh. how did they, how did they cast Abu Bakr in there? definitely you know representation I mean? of that. Yeah, so I, I think they, they meant it. Yeah, you know, they, for sure. For sure they meant for it. Sure. But I don't think they were trying to point out. Yeah. Um, again, I said to you, if they were trying to point out um, any Islamophobia in there, they would have chosen, uh, you know, Al Qaeda, for instance, they would have chosen yeah. Shabab, for instance, yeah. all of these places that you know they would have shown some other other things. Right? It was interesting. So Yasin and I had a conversation. Mm -hmm. I'll pull him into this, but so he was coming at it from a different angle because mm -hmm. he was like, people are like taking this topic into like it's become like this social justice movie. Yeah, it's become this feminism movie. Yeah, and he's coming from like he's a alim. A scholar in yeah. Marvel Comics. Yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, not as so, much as my other friends, but yeah, I was coming, coming. From yeah. Nerd that's a new thing for Marvel. They don't do these kinds of things. You know, yeah. Like that. Like that. Well, like he was kind of like you guys are making all these commentaries about the comics, and you guys yeah. never actually read the comics. Yeah. You know, it's like people like start giving fatawa about Islam and you yeah. never actually read the Quran and so now like how yeah, can exactly. you so he's like you haven't read the Quran and so now Black Panther which is you know the, the comics, comics yeah. itself so I thought that was interesting his people have a gripe <laughs> against this yes we do yeah. <laughs> no I, I mean so and I guess really that's interesting you know um, because what 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 did you think it was Islamophobic honestly no I didn't I didn't because um I didn't think it was Islamophobic simply because of the fact that they're drawing from an actual uh, situation that's currently happening yeah, in Africa. So this, this is number one. And then number two is, the, I thought the, 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 the more important part is that immediately after he beats, he beats down all of them mm -hmm. and then there was, he was about to take out the kid mm -hmm. and then uh, I think it's Nakia. Yeah. Um, she, yeah. Yeah. So she she stops him and says that he also, and that was the human. It's a child soldier. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a child soldier. So like that was the human aspect of it as well. It was the yeah. and and that kind of gave both sides like yeah. very quickly be able to build a little bit of context around it, and then they moved on off of it. They didn't lean into it at all. Yeah. And it was and 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 then you know it told their story. So for me, no, it wasn't. I think I think. They made I think a reference to a really, really searching for that. Yeah. yeah, and that's the problem, really, right? I mean, that's that's actually a good thing that you've said this mm -hmm. because we do look for them everywhere now. Like yeah. we look for like issues that are happening. So during the Cold War, we're like hypersensitive. During the Cold War, yeah. all film references <clears throat> were like to the red, the big red evil, right? That's that's what it was all about. Like mm -hmm. all films were like that. You know what I mean? It's always like the, the Russians and, and and the communists, and you know, you know, see what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Um, and then. Let's be very frank. You know what I mean. The the big war that's happening nowadays is between yeah. extremist Muslims, right, mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of the world. Right. You know what I mean. And I I never want to say even a, a non-Muslims, right, because mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. I think anybody who thinks that um, Islamic extremism does hurts non-Muslims more than Muslims is an ignorant person. Who person I don't even engage in a discussion mm -hmm. at all. I just walk away from him. Yeah. And because I've seen it. Like you know what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. we've seen Muslims be hurt by these people a lot more than non-Muslims. Yeah. 
you just big up the issues that happen when your your people are involved, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and you downplay when when our people are being hurt, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because we're not, we're, let's be very frank, we're not equal. Like, the yeah. way that they see us is we're not equal, and that's what this movie made it so cool to me. Is like there's a like a sense of equality of the fact that like no nah, man, like this is an African country, it looks so much better than here, mm -hmm. and people are so much nicer. Again, I go back to the you know, and 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 guess what? The guy is not corrupt, and the only corrupt guy in this whole joint is a white dude. Like, <laughs> like really, like that. You know, that's so cool. You know what yeah. I mean? And the other, um, and other semi-corrupt guy. I mean, I, I feel bad. Was it Nick Cannon? No, no, no. It looked like him, didn't it? No, it's uh, Michael, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan. Right. No, I, it's so it's so weird because he was he did such a good job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, even though I think I thought he overacted a little bit, but it was like it was so cool. That's yeah, uh, and that's the second guy that was, but he wasn't so a bad of, guy got, because just just because he was a bad guy. Yeah, there was history. Was, there was right. there was a development to his character to make you feel like because you didn't hate him. Yeah. You didn't hate him. He did a lot of things, but I didn't feel like oh I hate this guy. Yeah. Like this guy is just bad. This guy needs love. Like I'm like this guy needs from. like a hug. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 Black Panther was like so into the fact that he's like he we made a mistake. Yeah. Like he was talking to his father. He, yelling at him it's like yeah. you made a mistake you left them yeah. you know what i mean you you and and therefore we can feel like like we we have some sort of, but the other white dude when he got killed i was like good riddance that guy is <laughs> whack it was terrible you know what i mean i was i was so yeah. comfortable with the fact that he got killed the other yeah. guy the the armless dude yeah because he that's true because he he was like the perspective of how dare these black people be better than us yeah that was his perspective yeah it was interesting. One of the articles, you know, I talked about how it got hyped up like crazy. One yeah. of the articles I saw out there was like, Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger is the best villain since the Joker. And I but was he like, wasn't, yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. He was so good. Like, he was good. I'll tell you, you know what? They, like, didn't, they didn't give his character enough time. Yeah. Like that, I was like, so, he came in so late in the movie and then like it was so quick, all this stuff happened. I, I think maybe more development probably would have worked. Like yeah. maybe uh, his history of how he, like just the fact that, oh, he grew up here, he went through the seal and whatever, like being told through the other white guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, that 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 actually uh, irritated me a little bit. I'm like, no, yeah. you can't have the white guy tell this guy's story. Exactly. That just doesn't make any sense to me because this whole thing, yeah, according to me, very anti-white. Like, let's let's not play this. You yeah. know, let's let's play this all the way to the end. And then, like, yeah. So the white guy is like, and he killed so many people, and he's part of CIA. Yeah. And he's part of this, this, he's part of this. But then they didn't show his like his human side. Well, also like his intelligence. Like, he was part yeah. of the CIA, and he's part of all this stuff. You think he'd be like like wicked smart and stuff, but they yeah. never showed that. They just like not only that they said showed it so that we could. They assume showed that, him uh, as like stupid as yeah. like quick to to react like burn all of this like that yeah. that's not the kind of person a cia guy trained would do like a cia exactly. trained guy would do he would like take a couple of them put them in his pocket be like burn the rest yeah that's what he would do <laughs> yeah. just think about it you know what i mean stuff like but that. he was like no burn everything no other king is coming after me no bro yeah. that's not what these guys do these guys are too evil to just think like short term yeah so that that was the parts that bothered me about him but yeah. um but yeah I mean, but he, he was good like i i really he thought was, he was yeah. good yeah um I mean, you know, I, I'm gonna be, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I just, I've been wanting, wanting to walk to white people when they talk and just go like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just even wanted to do that, but I'm like, you, you know, it's just, it's, yeah. it's just too white of a country that I'm in right now. I might not be the, 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 you know, it might not be the case or whatever. But me and my daughter were doing it the whole time, like every time, like you know, as we were driving, uh, and and this lady was like, it's so funny. So. Uh, I shouldn't say this, but my, my backlights have been out for like months now, right? <laughs> and everywhere I go, people like, nice white people, yeah. <laughs> they honk at me and they pull next to you like, you have no backlights. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know, I got it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And a lady did that yesterday as, as we were driving home, me and my daughter, and as soon as I pulled the window down, I was like, okay, yeah, I got it. And as soon as I closed the window, I just looked at her and both of us were like, and it was cool. Like, like my daughter gets what's going on. It's just 10, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm gonna call a couple of people colonizers for sure. Like, I have a couple people. I felt on my mind. I felt way more African when I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. as an Egyptian who was like that doesn't actually yeah. know where you fit in. I'm like, yeah, I'm, but I'm that's definitely the African. Thing. I mean, no, so this did is you see really that? Cool. Did you see that video? Can we play a video, like the audio of a video on this? Yeah. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, so I'm gonna pull up this video because I, I think you have to you have to hear it. Even if you don't see it, if you hear it, I think it kind of explains why this is so impactful. Um, colonizers. 
Uh, no, so it's, it's of this little kid, and he's like talking to his mom. But it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, here it is. You thought you were all black? Mm-hmm. Well, you're half of daddy, and daddy's black, right? Daddy's a boy. Cam, you're black, Filipino, and Mexican. You're half of daddy and half of mommy, so you're half of what daddy is and half of what mommy is, right? Why are you so upset about it? I don't want to be all black. You want to be all black? Yeah. How much half black am I? What do you mean? What number? 50%. That's <laughs> not you enough. You want it to be more? Like how much? <laughs> Why are you so upset? Because I think I'm white. If I'm half black, that means I'm white. You're not white. How do you know? I'm half black and I want to be all black. He's black. Yeah, we see this again. It's hilarious. So this is <laughs> no, this is interesting though. This is yeah. the thing you use. So. I go back to the whole idea of like Sudan, right? Uh, yeah. Whether we're black or not black, and and, and I have this. I, I had some like, It's a good thing you've mentioned uh, Sheikh uh, Dawood Walid because mm-hmm. I talked to him about this uh, in details. I told him like my kids. So we're weird. Like we like our country is just weird. Like Sudan is just weird, mm-hmm. weird country, right? So my mom is like lighter skin, but she has like her hair is like really um, um, very African. You know what I'm saying? Really kinky, right? Mm-hmm. And my dad is like this dark skin guy, but he has like like almost like a, a, a an Indo Pakistani kind of hair, mm-hmm. which is so strange. Like uh, you know, like like yeah. living here in this country now, like it's so weird thing to do. Yeah. So what I end up doing is he, he came with our mix of kind of hair, right? Mm-hmm. Now my wife, um, she comes from like the northern part of Sudan, which is the, they're like mm-hmm. the Nubians, the real Nubians, right? right? So they 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 don't even speak Arabic. They have mm-hmm. like the Nubian language, right? Yeah. Um, and but what they do have is like really straight hair. Mm-hmm. So the mix is like my kids now came up with this like weird mix. Like they look <laughs> they look so strange. Like I have one guy I call him uh, so Omar. I call him Omar the Indian because he's got like an Indian like it has Indian hair. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, and and he looks Indian. Mm-hmm. Just this is what it is. Uh, but I talk I talk to them like. We're black. I grew up with black people. Like you know, mm-hmm. what I mean, like I, I don't never ever want like people to think that, uh, you know, I was confused about my like <laughs> my my what I was. Right? right. I always thought I was black all my life. I've I've lived as a black person. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. ever since I came from Sudan. Right. You yeah. know, in Sudan we were the white people, by the way. <laughs> like yeah, because because racism is localized. Right? Yeah. Racism is really local. Right. Uh, in Sudan we were the white people. You yeah. know, everybody else was black. <laughs> we came to Canada. Guess what? I was the black person. Everybody else was white. Yeah. And it changed my perspective on things. But now when I talk to uh, Omar, so sometimes when I joke around with him, um, we, we like, I don't know who it was, but we heard somebody say, use the N-word, right? Yeah. Like in in not the negative way, right? In in how a black person would say it to a black person. And I laughed. I thought it was a funny joke. You know, whatever it <laughs> was, right? You know, I, I, sh- I, I should say I shouldn't condone that, right? Yeah. But then he 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 said it to me, mm. right, and the same thing. And I was like, "Omar, you can't say that to people, right?" He's like, "Why?" I was like, "Because you know, it's, cause some people may misunderstand it." And he's six. Like, mm-hmm. how do you talk to a six year old about like yeah. race? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is struggles that I when I was earlier when we were talking about like kids and having like having conversations with them you know what i mean and mm-hmm. and all these issues like these are issues that i'm dealing with you know what i yeah. mean when i'm trying to explain to my kid okay you're not black uh yet you're not really white yet you're not like you know what i mean like all these yeah. kinds of things that are just so complicated that i feel for that kid when when someone says to him you're not white and you're and you're not black and i want to be mm-hmm. something like i just want to be something that's clear and and there mm-hmm. isn't like right now if you look in the world there's nobody is clear. Like even black people have different affiliations. You know, black yeah. Muslims, you know what I mean, are different than just black people, right? right. Somali Africans are different than Nigerian Africans. They don't yeah. look the same. You know what I mean? Their history isn't the same. Their struggles are not. The struggles is not the same. You know what I mean? And and therefore we go ahead and we lump them all at once. I don't even know who it was. I think it was Imam um, uh, Yasin Dwyer who said like, assuming that all black people. <laughs> 
Okay. Or like one group of people. I don't know what he, he meant, but he's just saying like, it, it's wrong to assume that everybody has the same history and everybody has yeah. the same struggles. Even when we come from the same country in the same place, you know, even assuming that African-Americans, all of them have the same struggles. I think it's a problem to assume that, you know what I yeah. mean? I think also like for the activists who are out there, sometimes like the activists, the black people who yeah. are pushing, they assume like my position is the black position. And sometimes that's a big assumption to make. Right? Be because you don't even know what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's interesting. I mean, like, so uh, the, one of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter, yeah. she's a Sudanese sister, right? Yeah. And I always assume, and I, I, I say, I, and I've been wanting to like maybe have a conversation with her, mm -hmm. with the fact that um, you you can't just assume to understand people's struggles. Mm -hmm. to me that's a really big problem right like you just can't assume that you understand people's struggles you know what i mean um mm -hmm. and, and 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 you'll say the wrong things when you make these assumptions and you'll do right. the wrong things when you make these assumptions you know you'll go too hard you go too low you know yeah. what i mean like one of the two things i would love to have that conversation because you know i like when the black lives matter thing was at its height mm -hmm. i remember sitting with with uh buna, buna and talking to him about this stuff and he's like you know i feel the overarching theme mm -hmm. of black lives matter yeah. I don't the details, feel brilliant. I don't feel the details. Yeah. I don't feel the group at all. Yeah. And I remember another group, they were like an MSA or something. They had to do like a black in the MSA kind of event. Mm -hmm. And they brought like Sheikh Abdul Adris and they brought like some other shiuch yeah. in. And again, that disconnect was there. And they're like, you know what? You guys don't represent us. And there's yeah. this, this like there's all, especially in the Muslim community, a lot of black yeah. people don't feel connected to Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And I feel like that's, there's, there's something that needs to be, there's a, a bridge that needs to be gapped there. There's a conversation that needs to happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the biggest problem with, with all these kind of activism period is the all in or nothing mm -hmm. mentality, right? To me, that's a really big issue, right? I take yeah. all of your costs, every single one, every single detail of it, or I'm not with you. Yeah. And that's an extreme position. In Islam, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Anybody who would say to you, it's either this or that, it's an extreme position. I don't have yeah. to. I don't. I just don't have to. You know what I mean. I can be in with you uh, in the struggles of black people. I don't have to go into the struggles of um, whatever it is that that, that that actually into right, like right. the LGBTQ. Even the fact that you actually hold on. So lumping LGBTQ two themselves together in one thing. I don't agree with that. I don't mm. think they're, the struggles are the same. I don't think lesbians and gays um, and uh, have the same struggles as transgender people. Mm -hmm. No, you know what I'm saying to you? Absolutely, I, do, yeah. I don't agree at all. I don't think that's the case at all. I think one of them has has it harder than the other one. You know what I'm saying? And I think one of them may have uh, 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 within Islam a proper, a, a, a more understanding perspective, you know, a clear perspective than the other ones. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So why do I have to like well, buy everything as I say? I don't want right. to do that, you know? Uh, and, and that's a problem to me, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's why I always say, actually, when I was, when I was, so I was actually asked about this a while ago at the university, and I was saying, like, why can we not have our own organizations? Like, why can we not have, I don't want to call it Black Lives Matter, but why can we not have, like, an anti-black racism movement within the Muslims? That's that's mm -hmm. a that's a that's a that's a good uh, mm -hmm. organization to start with. We don't have to be with everybody, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and also at the same time, when we talk about like, um, I'm a, I'm really big for like the uh, Native Americans um, right. and and their struggles, man. Like like that really needs to be a cause that Muslims buy in. <laughs> Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. But you don't have to buy everything. Like again, like why do mm. I have to buy every single thing? You know, some yeah. of the positions are just not really understand. Like they're yeah. not they're not understood by you as a person. But are they being um for instance like uh, targeted by police mm -hmm. in cities like Winnipeg and absolutely. Yeah. Who would, who would say no? How can you these two guys right now, mm -hmm. both of them non-guilty and you shot people. Like this guy shot a guy in the back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like who, 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 how, what kind of jury does that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you? What kind of jury does that? Yeah. When you shoot somebody in the back of the head and you say, well, he was on my property. He was, he was the back of his head. 
Yeah. It, that, that, that's enough right there. He's either is running away from you or it wasn't facing you. Like you're not in, yeah. at all in the place. And in, you're in Canada. You don't even have this whole like stand your position kind of law that they have in Florida, right? right. Where people can even get into this. You know what I'm saying? For those who don't know, because I think there are some Americans who listen to this. Oh, okay. Uh, this is uh, what, you he's referencing this. Col Colton Bushy, <laughs> yeah. is his name. Um, he was killed. Uh, he was looking for directions and he stopped at a yeah. farm. And uh, the farmer shot him at the back and he claimed self defense. Um, and somehow he got off on that. <laughs> he, a jury of his peers. Which are all, all white jury. A whole of. bunch of white people said, yeah. yeah, it's okay. He didn't mean it. He was a nice guy. He's a really nice yeah. farmer. And he, you know, and you know how scary those native, uh, native Canadians are yeah. when they pull in in their trucks wearing their normal clothes that everybody else wears. Like, yeah. like it's, it, it just doesn't make any sense. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, so I'm I'm into all of that, but I always say that we can have our own perspective. Like it doesn't have to be like okay, let's let's just mm -hmm. be in with this community or not. But speaking of that, actually today, uh, so Sheikh Omar Suleiman was arrested today. Yes, um, I think he's he's been released already. But this is but, weird to uh, me. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think but. it's a bad idea <laughs> because guess what will happen? Um, in his travels, for instance, he will be asked Have if he's ever, ever arrested? been arrested. And I don't know if he's been arrested and charged. who don't like him, right, yeah. will just use that as reasons for not to, not to allow him entry. I always tell Muslims, like, like be careful of, like, yeah. buying all... I don't want to say... It sounds a little cowardice, right? Because yeah. it's really... But, he, he's, but I like, think that was, benefit, pro He was protesting about DACA. So yeah. about, about the... Pro like, people are going to be deported who've yeah. been, lived in America their whole lives who don't have any connection to the country they're going to be deported to. Yeah. So it's, it's an important issue, and there's millions of people going to be affected by that. I don't know if he's been arrested, like charged, yeah, or if he yeah, yeah. just got detained and released. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll find out, inshallah, more information soon. But I, I understand what you mean. But I get really worried about sometimes these things don't because you have sometimes to, like, it's not good. I mean, at the end of the day, like, don't you have you know to how many step speakers up and talk? And how many shiuch I would like to have in Canada, but I can't bring them because they were One in prison. Sure another. Sometimes yeah. they were in prison. Sometimes <laughs> at some time in their life, like it's so funny because I look at like uh, when we talk about it's, it's a funny thing you talk All about right. like African Americans, right? And the vast majority of like African American imams that I want to bring in here so they can talk to people, mm -hmm. they I don't want to say everybody, but the vast majority of them have accepted Islam in prison. Yeah. You know what I'm and then they be, they come out like good men. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I know but Shadid then, Muhammad have been trying to bring him. Yeah, and it's not, it's yeah. Not able Shadid to bring Muhammad him. is like a perfect example. Yeah. Like this guy is a is a, is a mashallah, may Allah yeah. protect him. He's a gr he's amazing a guy. I, I love being with him. You know, yeah. first of all, he's, he's just just a, you know uh, his presence is just really nice. Yeah. But then, Canada just doesn't like him. Yeah, you know what I mean. So therefore, but yet at the same time, they allow for all these other idiots to come in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With with other. I issues, think he right? can come in. I think it just once he was turned back, and I think it might be possible to bring him. In. But he's a, he's a good speaker, man. Yeah, he's, he's like. I mean, I don't agree with everything, but like he brings yeah. he brings fire. Yeah. <laughs> to his talks. I mean, you, and you can't agree with everything, Ibrahim. I mean, yeah. so and this actually, you bring this as a, as a good point. I think we talked about this as well. I think we have to agree with everybody on everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, I used to when I was younger. Yeah. I think you touched on this a little bit. When you just become religious, you kind of go on the extreme side of things. The yeah. moment, the moment the the sheikh says the one <laughs> wrong sentence, you're like, ah. Oh, this guy is throwing in the garbage now. I'm not, never got <laughs> to see him again. Done deal with him, yeah, you know? Yeah. And. Well, I get that now, you know, like sometimes I'm preparing my khutbah. Yeah. And I'll be listening. I don't want to pick up names, but I'll be listening to like a lecture from this speaker, yeah. that speaker. And then somebody will come into my office and be like, that guy works with this government. How dare yeah. you listen to him? Yeah. I'm like, if I'm starting to cross off people yeah. for working with governments, I got nobody left to listen to, yeah. right? Like very few speakers are going to be able to listen to them. I mean, so. There's people that I can name that I would never really like ever like listen to. Yeah. Period. You know what I'm saying? For me, I'll but listen to. But those are not even you, you know, if you think about it. Well, no, there's some shiur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Muhammad Hassan and so on and so forth, right? Well, and, even, and even Muhammad that, Arif, I was listening to him, and yeah. like, he talks too much. To I'm like, okay, like I get that. So I'm not, on, so I'm, not, so I'm, I'm not taking that information from him. So I'm gonna tell you something. Like, I'm gonna tell you something. So anybody in Saudi Arabia, yeah. I give them an excuse. Yeah. I, 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 I was like, an excuse. But even more, I, I will listen to Habib Ali Jeffrey. Yeah. Even though, like, politically, I mean, I would be like, a lot of criticisms no going, I on. No okay. going on. I don't even know where to start with my criticism, yeah. but I will still listen to some of his lectures. I mean, I'm not going to. I don't know who it was. Um, uh, I think it was Sheikh, uh, Jaffer Sheikh Idris. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and I don't know who it was. No, it wasn't him. It was somebody. It was in Saudi Arabia, and I was talking to him. Sheikh Yusuf Jafar Idris, his mm-hmm. son. His son. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, talking to him. I was like, man, so weird. Like so many of these shiuch change their minds all of a sudden about it. And he mm-hmm. said to me, he's like, man, it's like this country has such jails that it will change anybody's <laughs> mind about, about anything. anything. <laughs> and that's real. Like, you know what I mean? Like, suffered Hawali. Yeah. The kind of things that they did to this guy. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what happened to him in reality. I met him one time. He doesn't talk anymore at all, right? Exactly. He just cut himself off. It's, yeah. it's, it's, and, and, and I mean, some of the, the people say to me, he just literally checked out. Yeah. He just checked out. He's just gone. See but y'all. what they used to say, honestly, and this is what I heard when I was in Saudi, uh, is that they would put him, and I don't know. I mean, some people actually like, but but it, but it's not it's not like far fetched for me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That they would put him in like a well, and they would close him in that well for like mm-hmm. six months at a time. Wow, you know what I'm saying? That will drive anybody nuts. Like it doesn't yeah. matter how. Like don't tell me, oh, Ibn Taymiyyah said if they jail me, I'm yeah. going to be this. And the, the, yeah, that's cool. That's jail. <laughs> but like, imagine like uh, being. In, in self-contained like in solitary confinement yeah. for six months in a dark place you can't tell it you'll go you'll go nuts yeah. you will go nuts so you come out you you know you even even um uh for instance when he came out yeah. of jail he came out a completely different person yeah. you know what i'm saying and 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 that's why I, when I when people tell me, oh, Sheikh Arif has changed, I'm like, you guys don't know what time of day it is. These guys know. Well, you know what yeah. I mean? Well, I think also people are making like determinations based on information you don't have access to. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you can't criticize them. Like if you believe that Sheikh Zon So is doing a bad thing and you want to criticize their position, fine, criticize them. But when you start going to the level of like, this guy's misguided, he's, yeah. he's evil, yeah. he's this, he's this, he's a scholar of the of the rulers, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff gets thrown out. There. And that's when I think you've gone too far because you don't know what they're seeing. Yeah. I remember a story, I think Sheikh uh, Salah al muqamasi mentioned the story mm-hmm. of um, uh, a situation where like a king was angry at one of the scholars because he said something and uh, he decided he's going to kill him. So a second scholar um, who was well known at the time, he went to the king and he said like, listen, I'm I'm asking you privately, please don't kill him. So he said, okay, the only way I won't kill him is if um, instead of killing him, we're going to whip him, lash him publicly. And you have to be the one to lash him. Yeah. So he said, okay. And he went out in front of the people and he started and he lashing yeah. the other sheikh. And everybody's seeing this one sheikh this lash the other sultan, one. Yeah. He's, he's a sellout. He's, sultan, he's this, yeah. he's this, and this. Yeah. And all of them are cursing him. Yeah. And they don't and understand. He's saving his life. He's saving his life, right? And, so. you know, and, and subhanAllah, this is like, <laughs> um, so I got fired from my mosque. I, you probably know this. Right? <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to talk about this publicly. Oh, I, I mean, I, I really, guy, I've talked to everybody, but I don't even care. I'm not even. I'm not even concerned. They don't. They, don't, they would never listen to this, first of all, because um, they're not that type of people. Um, and it was such a miscommunication, hmm. like the whole thing was just a miscommunication that I was just like astonished at how messed up it was. Mm. Like this whole situation between me and them could have just been fixed by them asking me a question, just mm. one question. Mm. Yet what they did is they made an assumption, and they acted based on the assumption, and because they didn't want to go back from that mm. <laughs> that action, yeah. they made <laughs> further assumptions. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they just dug it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and he just, just gotten so ugly over nothing. It was, it was, it was the weirdest thing. First of all, I've never been fired in my lifetime. Mm. Like I've worked with kuffar for crying out loud, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, like, like a non-Muslim, and I've, I've, I've disagreed with bosses of mine like hard. I have the kind of personality where I just don't allow for things to yeah. go against what I think without having to say what was on my mind. Yeah. And um, But these guys were like my team. Like you, you see what I'm saying to you? Like even when I would talk to them, I would be rough and stuff like that. I would yeah. still talk to them like they're my team. Like you guys are my team. The reason why I'm talking mm-hmm. to you this way is because you guys are on my team. We're a team. We're a team. We're a team. And mm-hmm. I would call them when I have issues with my kids. Or call them when I have issues with my with my wife. I'd call them when I have issues with everything. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Then all of the sudden, honestly, the miscommunication just came about. They 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 came together and they decided to just let me go. 
and they uh, wouldn't answer my calls. They wouldn't talk to me. They wouldn't reply to my emails. They just that's it. You, you see what I'm saying to you? Uh, um, and I I told everybody I was like, man, it's a miscommunication. Like these guys should just ask me, why did you do this? Mm -hmm. I would have explained it. It was as simple as that. It was mm -hmm. literally a simple. And I may have made a mistake. You know what I mean? And whatever yeah. I did that they think. But what, did I have a real reason for doing it? Yeah, I did. Of course, I'm not an idiot. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, so this doesn't even just so. For, and from that day, subhanAllah, I always tell people I was like, yo, talk to one another, ask questions that are real. Like don't don't even be like. Uh, you know, many Muslims come from these countries where, like, you can't ask real questions. You know, you have to, like, mm -hmm. make tell me. Right. You know what I mean? I think that's the biggest problem. Like, like, living in the West, I'm so happy with, like, just being able to ask questions. Like, Ibrahim, mm -hmm. why are you acting like this towards me? Mm -hmm. And you just, I expect you to be like, well, Mamun, I heard you said this. Mm -hmm. And I explained to you. Like, that's, that's it. And it's done. Like, if I said mm -hmm. what you thought I said, and he was, you know, you can rectify my idea. That's cool. If you mm -hmm. don't, now you understand the truth. But imagine you don't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. No, it's all cool. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I'm like, no, we're not cool. I can tell that you're not cool with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like something is wrong. And yet you're telling me there's nothing happening and we just go ahead our separate ways. And imagine like how the ummah is like being broken up like this. By the way, in leadership, like we're talking about the leadership of the community itself that are like that everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A person wouldn't answer the phone call for me to go ahead and fundraise in his masjid. Therefore, he must hate Mm. Me or doesn't want me to fundraise So next time I won't let them fundraise in my mosque mm. And we're breaking up the ummah Like the community is just basically Like being, being torn up You know what I mean yeah. By either not communicating Or thinking that we're too good To go ahead and and, and, and and to provide people With our perspective Right It's like too much like It's like negative assumptions Just like consume us Yeah and I mean <clears throat> And asal is Is that you think well of the Muslims Like that's, yeah. that's the whole idea of it You know yeah. what I mean uh, Especially where like the, we're talking about the leadership of the Muslim community. Like, you're not talking yeah. about the general people. You're talking yeah. about the leadership, talking about the imams, it's talking true. about the ones who spent their time uh, and their lives, really, in a sense, in running masajid, like the management of the masajid and so on. So, these are yeah. good people. Let's say, like, it doesn't matter how bad they are, they are still the cream of the crop of the community. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. as bad as that, that, that is, right? Yeah. So, why are they behaving like that? You know, you know how many people have always said to me, is like, as soon as I got into the masajid, the business of masajid, I just been turned off from like the whole shiur thing, mm. and and some people say that you know what I mean. It's like yeah. I just realized you realize that shiur are people. That's what yeah. you realize basically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is that they get angry and that they say the wrong things and that they have lies and that they have yeah. and that they have issues. You know what I mean? And that they like money, they like women. Like mm. you just realize that they're people. Basically, yeah. is what you realize, right? And all of a sudden, and and you used to treat them as their prophets. And that, that's yeah. your problem, really, is that, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's not really theirs. Yeah. This was a really packed. Um, <laughs> this, was, this, was a, this is definitely the longest. Yeah, this is podcast well, we've had. And I feel like we could keep talking. Like, yeah. How long do you have, have to your book for? For, like, for like days or because we could do I this? I don't think we go by time. We go by episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this guy. And you don't want to work with me. <laughs> I see it's just gonna stay up all night. Yeah. And uh <laughs> Yeah. No, but it was um this is really cool, man. I, I really uh, I hope uh, that um that you know you receive a lot of success through this, inshallah. Yeah. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all that's good, inshallah. I mean that. this you, you um I don't really want to like praise you in front of you because that's not really yeah, good. Kind of weird. Um, it's, just, it's not even good, like it's not right, right? There's no dirt here, otherwise I'm just throwing your face. But uh, but Jazakallah khair man This is this in itself For sure is a, is a good idea Inshallah sure. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will bless it based on that Inshallah I mean hopefully it picks up And I really appreciate You driving all the way out here yeah. And uh, definitely You're going to have to Come back on Yeah yeah no We'll come back <laughs> Maybe we'll even like Change it into like a, 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 You know a co-hosting thing I'll keep the name the same way I'll be a co-host I'll report from uh, From Curtis If you're down man I'm, I'll, I'm... I'll come I'll, I'll just do like The report from Curtis But the thing is that I only see two mics here Oh there's a fourth There's a fourth there's, there's yeah, a third one. Yeah, yeah. And then that means we can't have more than another person now. And that would be it. But, it yeah, out. I like it, yes, man. I can figure it out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.